Welcome compadres. Today we're talking petroleum engineering. We're going to look at decline curve analysis of an oil well. So in the past we've done natural gas. The same principles apply. The only difference is when you're looking at an oil well you probably have a little bit more noise in your data and in addition with that you also have a gas stream that you're producing with the oil stream. So today we're going to show you or I'm going to show you how to forecast your oil EUR oil reserves as well as your gas EUR and gas reserves and the only difference is, is uh, you're just using an additional plot uh, to do this but it's really simple I'll show you how to do it um, so guys I hope you're amped up let's get to it today we're gonna look at oil decline curve data and what we're gonna do is we're gonna determine the EUR and reserves of the gas and oil streams using rate time decline analysis so this is a plot of our data on a rate time curve Essentially what we're doing is the same thing we did in the natural gas engineering series is we're fitting ARPS equations to our data and then we're going to forecast beyond our last point to get reserves and EUR. So it's the exact same correlations, ARPS correlations, so nothing different there. If you need a refresher on this, go look at my rate time natural gas decline curve video. I stepped through some of the uh, more technical details of ARPS equations. And so the next thing we need in this oil analysis, because we're, we're going to see both gas and oil streams, we need to look at the gas aspect to it as well. And the way we do that is we do that with a cumulative gas production versus cumulative oil production plot. And this will help us get the EUR of our gas and also the, res the gas reserves value. And I want to just emphasize that you know, this is the exact same thing as gas decline curve analysis. Um, it's worth repeating because uh, if you were, if you're familiar with the natural gas aspect of it, this should be pretty easy. The only difference is, is you have more noise in your data as shown here with oil wells. So the typical workflow to get our reserves in the EUR of both streams is to look at a rate time plot and then fit our ARPS equations to the oil uh, rate and then we'll be able to forecast and get our oil reserves and our oil oil EUR. The next plot we use is a cumulative gas production versus cumulative oil production plot and I've talked about this as well in a previous video so if you don't understand what this is I advise you go back and look at that video but essentially what we're doing is we're fitting a straight line to the late time data which represents the data beyond our bubble point and we're going to use it to forecast to our gas EUR as a function of our oil EUR. So this blue line right here is represented by this equation. It's a power function where M is our slope, MP is our cumulative oil production, and GP is our intercept of this line on the <coughs> log log plot. And we can just exchange terms and change this term to the EUR of our gas if we put in uh, the EUR of our oil on this, this side right here. And so that's all we're doing. Pretty simple. Um, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to step into the Excel analysis and show you how, how I would do this uh, particular well. So let's get to it. So what I've done is I brought in monthly data for this well right here I have cumulative gas production, cumulative oil production, and then I have the time associated with each of these values in months, and then I also have the monthly rates in barrels per month. So I've plotted our data on here, and I've also put in our forecast line, this is the same procedure I, I've used in the natural gas. I'm using the rate time forecast or ARPS relations to do this. Uh, not much different than what we've done. So if you don't know this, uh, please go back to my previous rate time video in natural gas engineering. It's the exact same setup. The first step we want to do is we want to fit this equation to our data. And when you're using rate time decline or boundary dominated forecasting, what you want to do is you want to look at your data and you want to look at a good starting point. So in this case, it looks like, you know, the 
second, third, you know, months, you know, that's bad data. So I don't want to start there. I want to start up here at this value at data point four. I want to forecast off of that. So if you remember when we did our linear flow interpretation and also our radio flow interpretation, when we switch to ARPS, we have to restart our clock at zero. And that's exactly what we have to do here. Yeah, so if we're going to start at, at point four, we have to make sure that in ARPS terms, we're starting at zero. And I'll go into the code to explain that. But what I'm doing here is I have a time to start. And so I want to start at, at uh, month four. And so I'm going to put this in. And you can see my data reacts to that. So my ARPS equation now is starting at 0.4. And that's just, I'll, I'll go into the code to explain how that works. Now what I want to do is I want to apply the sum of absolute errors, which is just the difference between my forecast point to the actual point divided by the actual uh, rate. That's all we're doing. Um, we've done this before. And you can see here my forecast line. Since I'm starting at 0.4, you know, I, I have no values here. And so what we want to do next is we want to try to So it looks like in this case, I need to adjust some of our parameters to get it to a closer fit to our data and then run solver on it. So I'm going to change our value, our initial rate to 14,000. And then I'm going to increase our decline rate to 25. And then let's see if I can uh, make our B value a little bit longer here. And so that's a pretty close fit. So that gets me close. The next thing I want to do is minimize the sum of square errors. And since I'm only starting, I'm only referencing this point at point 0.4, I want to uh, just minimize those errors from point 0.4 and beyond. So that represents from here on out. So I'll go to Solver. And I want to minimize the sum of errors right here by changing Q, I, D, I, and B. And if I hit solve, it looks like it gave me a better fit here. Uh, that's a pretty good fit. Um, of course, solver gives you a slightly different solution depending on your initial guesses. But that looks like a decent fit for, for my analysis. So I'm going to continue with that. And so from this plot, we can predict our oil and gas or oil reserves and so what I've done is here's our forecast line I just gave it some points up here um, and uh, same stuff I've done in natural gas engineering uh, I can extend it or or uh, retract it by changing this multiplier and uh, but the two key pieces of information we need are essentially uh, the rate at our last point and also the decline, instantaneous decline at our last point. So if we go back to this plot, what we're doing is, is we're going to use our ARPS function to calculate the area then under the curve from our last data point to our economic limit to get reserves. So that's all we're doing. And so I've, uh, first thing we want to do is calculate our last, uh, our cumulative production so far, so that's going to be the maximum of our column right here, our cumulative production column. And then I can calculate my reserves with this VBA function called cumulative production. It's the same function I've used before. So it's going to take QI, in this case, are we're looking at this point right here as our QI. So it's going to be this value, this rate. Our DI instantaneous decline is that. Our B boundary dominated is comes from ARPS. And then our economic limit is 50 in this case. I'm assuming it's 50. 
and so that's our reserves that's how much we have left to produce from this well based on our economic limit next we can calculate EUR EUR is simply going to be the sum of our cumulative production and our reserves so that's the expected EUR from this well or estimated ultimate recovery so now we've got our reserves and EUR of our oil now we can go to our cumulative production gas versus cumulative production oil plot and predict our gas res uh, EUR so I've done this in a previous video but what we've done I've already fit this data so what we need is we're going to use this equation right here we need our um, in this case we're going to modify that to this right here and um, so we're going to need our, the slope of our second blue line right here and then we need our EUR of our oil and then our intercept on this line so that's given by these values right here so I wrote a VBA function for that. It's just this right here, this equation. It's called EUR cumulative gas from cumulative oil. So we need the intercept of this second blue line, which is this value, our slope, which is this value, and then the EUR that we determined from our rate time decline curve and so that's our gas EUR right there so um, pretty simple right um, so now that we have this we can determine our reserves so we need to our reserves is simply going to be EUR minus the gas produced up to this point so the gas produced cumulative gas produced up to this point is just going to be in this column the max value in this case it's the last value and then our reserves, gas reserves, is simply going to be EUR minus gas produced up to this point. And so that's how many, how much gas we're expected to produce up to this economic limit. So guys, um, that's it. Uh, we just used two plots. We used the rate time plot to get our oil and oil reserves and oil EUR, and then we used our cumulative gas production versus cumulative oil production plot realizing that we're going to forecast off our late time data by fitting a power function to it represented by this equation and from this we can um, basically forecast our gas EUR and calculate our gas reserves so I'm going to step into the VBA code. I use the new code at least. Um, I've used a lot of this code in previous videos, but the new code is going to be a rate time forecast, which we used in this column right here to get our, uh, our uh, correlation on our plot. And then also this function right here. So if I press Alt F11, this is my functions. And if you remember, um, all we're doing is our ARPS rate time forecast. So we're using our ARPS rate equation. And it takes our arguments are going to be our start time because we want to start our clock at zero when we forecast using rate time. And then our QI, DI, B, and then our time value in months in this column. So if our time value in this column is greater than our start time, then we calculate our ARPS rate and if you remember when we're doing our rate when we're using ARPS when we we want to start our clock at zero so in this case you know it'll take our time value and subtract out four and, and if we start at time four that starts at at zero our forecast at zero that's what allows us to start forecasting at this at point four right here And then, um, you know, if if the time value is less than, if it's gonna be if it's gonna be less than our time to start, then you know I set the, the forecast 
this function returns a value of 0 which is represented by these columns right here that are above 0.4 so it returns 0 and then this is simply just our, our function here the second part of it is this this function it takes our intercept our slope and then our EUR and we calculate the EUR of our gas produced. So that's, I mean, look at this lines of code. That was nothing. That was easy to make up. I'm sure you guys can code this too. I'll post it to my website. So that's it, guys. That's all I have today. Um, that's, uh, we use real data from a, a, a oil well. Uh, I don't know anything about this well. Uh, I just have the data. That's all I know. And we were able to get you know, four key pieces of information that every reservoir engineer needs to uh, keep keep taps on their wells. So I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, I'll see you next time. Adios.